Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. We are Mile High Beach and today in our Good Eats and Small Spaces playlist, we're going to be doing a video on rainy day chicken stew. Now, is this my recipe? It is not. I just found it. <laughs> my name's Alicia. My wife's name's Plachette. She's behind the camera and our cute little furry son Charlie is yawning and he looks kind of bored he's over there on the couch <laughs> so today we're going to be doing this uh, chicken stew recipe I've never made this before so this is going to be fun to see how this turns out right all these kitchen experiments as my friend Joanne would call them um, yeah so we're going to go ahead and uh, get this started how do you do this kind of thing in these small spaces right you got to kind of get a little organized I would say so we're going to do this in the pressure cooker so we're going to turn this to a saute setting and as that's getting heated up I'm going to go through the other uh, ingredients. So I'm using this flexible, um, oh that's coming right on, I'm using this flexible, um, I'll just put that there for a second, uh, what do you call it, cutting board. I'm just going to put it here so it just stays here for a bit, I don't want it to drip down in there so we're going to just turn that like so there we go perfect you know when you're in these small spaces you got to use all the space you got right um, so the ingredients let's talk about that so these are chicken thighs seasoned uh, with a little bit of olive oil salt pepper um, and I put a little poultry seasoning on those so those are going to be ready to go here as soon as this gets hot over here we have a little bit of um, all-purpose flour this is gluten-free flour because anybody uh, that knows uh, or following our channel knows that I've had a real challenge with uh, gluten over the last probably 10 years now. I'm getting some help with that so it's actually not anywhere near as bad as it used to be but I still have gluten-free flour and I still use it. And this is Bob's Red Mill gluten-free flour. We'll put a link to that below. These are, um, these are just some uh, frozen bell peppers that were in the refrigerator or the freezer excuse me. And um, this is white wine. Delicious. That actually, the recipe actually does call for that. I'm not just adding it because I like to. <laughs> um, some salt and pepper. I already have mine pre-mixed and then this nice little Blackstone shaker that my brother got for me. And I was actually looking for, I need sage. That's the sage right there. Um, I need thyme and I need rosemary. And I didn't have any rosemary. <laughs> but this little uh, lemon herb blend from uh, Trisha Leach and KYD it actually has thyme in it and it has rosemary in it so I'm gonna go ahead and use this because hey that's what I have right so I'm gonna use that the recipe did not call for um, a bouillon cube but I'm putting that in there a normal bouillon cube it did not call for these um, bay leaves but I'm gonna put that in there too and I'm going to be using this as the broth. So this is our, um, this is not, none of this is sponsored, but we are an affiliate with, with Fond. So if you're interested in this, we'll put a code down below. This is actually one of their, one of the best ones that I like from their brand. And I'm just going to dump these two jars of that bouquet garni. Um, what do you call it? I'm going to dump that in there. Bouquet garni broth. So we're going to go ahead and put this chicken in there. You can hear that sizzle. That's what we're looking for. We're listening for that sizzle. We're just going to put these pieces in here and I'm not going to have them cook all the way. I'm just going to get a little sear on them. I'm going to get a little sear on this and once I get enough of a sear on this I'm going to take it out and hold it to the side and in the broth and the juices I'm going to cook the carrots, the celery, the onion, and the garlic. I think that was another ingredient that was not called for in the recipe. I mean, who makes something like this without garlic? Uh, I don't. <laughs> so I'll be putting garlic in there. All right. So we'll just let those go for a bit. Let those cook up. And then we'll put our little, uh, our little cutting board here. Alrighty folks, we uh, had a little bit of technical difficulty here, so I don't know where I was where things fell apart, so I'm just going to pick up where we left off. So we are putting these uh, pieces of chicken into our Instant Pot here so they can get a good little sear on them. Again, you don't want to cook it all the way, you just want to, 
you, you're really just trying to brown it, um, you know, brown these pieces up a little bit. And if you have an Instant Pot, the saute function on this really is great. You want to look down in there and see how, how that's coming along. Um, let's have a little look-see, see how it's coming along. Uh, gonna have to turn our max air fan on here because we're getting a little bit of steam. So pardon that noise, that's coming up. Um, yeah, so anyhow, um, I think I was talking about sizzling the chicken up and uh, the ingredients. I think I went through all of the ingredients here. Uh, I didn't talk about the green beans, those are just frozen uh, green beans. We're gonna dump those in at the appropriate moment. Have you, you, got, you got some stuff behind you, right? I do have some stuff behind me, yeah. So as that's come, you know, crisping up, we'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, and I'll talk about this as I'm pouring it in, but I've got onions here and sweet potatoes. And then on this other plate, I've got uh, carrot, celery, garlic, and white potatoes. And the recipe called for all these fabulous things. So we're gonna see how it turns out. I've never made this recipe before. Do you make a, a chicken stew? What do you make, what do you like to make on a rainy day? What's your favorite go-to rainy day recipe? Um, I'm gonna take some of this chicken out because we don't need it to go this far. This is gonna be a great little broth to cook our other stuff in. Now, when I cook this, when we turn on the Instant Pot and cook the, the chicken up, I'm gonna probably put it on for like maybe 20 minutes maybe. Because, you know, the regular recipe is not an Instant Pot recipe, but you know, I'm trying to do everything I can in this Instant Pot because it's easy peasy and the flavor is good and it's just one pot cooking. I think the other recipe that I'm getting this from is one pot cooking too, but I'm going to be using the Instant Pot today. Hopefully you use yours and you like to get a lot of good use out of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all this together and when we turn it on and turn the Instant Pot on it, we'll take a break and then we'll come back when we're, um, when we're doing the last steps because this has a really interesting finishing uh, couple of ingredients to it so that's going to be nice when we get it all done so when you look down in here you can see the nice little uh, you know we're going to deglaze here with some wine delicious but we're getting some good crispy chicken frying up here not crispy but a good sear we'll put it that way a good sear so I'm just gonna dump the rest of this in here these little flexible cutting boards are really super handy when you've got a small space. I'm gonna wipe that off. I'm not gonna dump that into the uh, drain. I don't know about you, but when I'm cooking with anything that's got oil in it, I wipe that off and put it in the trash. Um, and I actually reuse, um, if we've used a, a big Ziploc bag, I just clean it out and reuse that. So when I'm taking um, the starch from some pasta, when I've got something that's you know especially oily, I'm gonna grab some paper towel and put it uh, in the trash. Now, the big the big um, Ziploc bag, I'm using that for like something that's like the the starchy water that's coming off a of pasta or something. I just pour it into the bag and put it in the trash. You know, these little tanks in these RVs can be a little temperamental and so if you're having problems with odor, if you're having problems with you know your system backing up or not backing up but you know just having issues in general, mostly odor. Backing up too. Oh yeah, clogs. clogs yeah. If you're having any of that you gotta just be really careful about what you put down there. You might notice in the sink there we have a, a, dra a stra straining thing so we don't just let anything go down the down the drain. And so wiping off these things before we put it into, you know, the sink. And we use Dawn dishwashing liquid because Dawn dishwashing liquid, you know, is a good, got an amazing grease cutter. 
Um, so we do use that for that. I was using Dawn Power Wash, but I had to break up with Dawn Power Wash. And I had to send a note to Pro Procter & Gamble about it. I was like, oh no, this is not gonna work. What is happening with your product? We've been using that for a long time. And all of a sudden, no bueno, everything was tasting like Dawn Power Wash. Chili soap. Yeah. Popcorn soap. <laughs> Chili soap, popcorn soap, everything the that we were... that we were storing in our stasher bags. Yeah. Was was uh, taking on the flavor of the soap that we used to clean the bags. Yeah, and it was the Dawn Power Wash, not the regular Dawn. The regular Dawn we've been using, I've been using it for decades, and that's not a problem. Uh, but now I just use the Dawn Power Wash to clean the shower. <laughs> clean the door and the shower, and it works great. But no, we will not be using that in the kitchen anymore, because that's just, ugh, yuck. You know, you make this whole meal, you put it in a stasher bag, and the whole thing tastes like soap. Can't have that. All right, so this is almost done here. So this is great. Almost done. Chicken going in there. The next thing that's going in is going to be the onion, the carrot, and the celery. Oh, wait, onion, carrot, celery, yes. Onion, carrot, and celery is next. So I'm going to start getting this out of here. Yeah, I had to, I actually uh, <laughs> did a post on Twitter and Procter & Gamble was all about, they got some, they got a serious social game, Procter & Gamble. It was 24 hours and they were responding to me, tagging Dawn Power Wash and, you know, we got resolution to that, but it's just a shame. I don't know what, I don't know whether it's where it was made or what it was, but we've been using that product for a while with no problem and then all of a sudden, I don't know if it's a bad batch or whether they've just changed the formula, but it is not going to work. All right, so now we've got these nice bits in here, as you can see. I'm going to put this down in here. What's coming in next is our onion. I like to use red onion. We like a lot of onion in this house. So we like to use, I like to use red onion a lot. I mean, yellow onion's good too, but um, I like to use red onion or sweet onion. It depends on the recipe. I'm not... I mean, if the, uh, if the recipe specifically calls for a particular type of onion, I'll, I'll use that, but, um, you know, in, in RV life, pretty much use whatever you have. <laughs> Don't get too worked up about it. All right, so the onion's in. Now we're going to put this nice celery in here. You could tell I went to the grocery store yesterday. We actually have produce. I was down to the last onion and <laughs> went to a really nice... Uh, whole uh, natural food store here in town. All right, so the recipe did not call for garlic. I'm putting the garlic in here because, well, that's how you make stuff like this, at least from where I come from. We put garlic and stuff. So we're going to put all this celery down in here, try to get it all down in here. Oh, and the carrots too. What am I doing? The carrots go in too, so I might as well get them in there. These are beautiful rainbow carrots. Um, that's why you see the different color. They kind of look like potato, but these are carrots. The other thing on here is potato. All right. So we're getting that in. It smells great in here. Thank you for turning on the fan, wife. You are welcome. Yeah. I am the sous chef. <laughs> she is the sous chef. All right. So we're getting that down in there. That is gonna. We're gonna let these uh, just cook a little bit and get a little soft. Lots of carrot. Ooh, that garlic smells great. You know, it's funny. We went to a farmer's market in um, Astoria. Uh, wait, no, it was it wasn't Astoria. No, no, not that's not where we found the garlic. We did go to the farmer's market in Astoria, which was amazing. It was called the Sunday Market. But we went to the one in um, Anna Cortez, and that's where we found out the difference between regular garlic and gourmet garlic. <laughs> So I'm using the gourmet garlic, which I'm storing in this little, nice little mesh bag over here. It's super strong. Good stuff. That was where we got a little taste of it, right? You yeah. Up and yeah. Wow. Yeah. And boy, what a punch that yeah, stuff that had. Good. I'm like, I don't even know if I've ever tasted garlic this strong. This was good. So yeah. And it was interesting because I was like, what, I, how, do, how does one know the difference between a gourmet garlic and a regular garlic? Of course, I had asked my brother this. Um, my brother is a, he's an IT manager, but he's also a very good chef. <laughs> and uh, I had to ask him those little differences. He was telling me that the, I didn't know that a lot of our garlic comes from China. And the stuff that's gourmet has the little hairs at the bottom. Um, and, you know, it has the little hairs at the bottom. The stuff that doesn't have 
the hairs at the bottom is the stuff that comes from China. Now, I don't have any issue with it coming from China, but I just want to know the difference, you know? I just wanted to know the difference. And when we had a taste of that stuff, it was seriously strong. It was good. Very good. All right, so as these are cooking up like this, um, we put a little bit of flour in here and then we stir it around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I was I know I was gonna deglaze with the wine, but I don't think the wine comes in this order, but I don't know that it matters. Because see this is letting off enough um it doesn't matter. But thank you. Yeah. you just kind of together Well what I'm noticing is that, you know, these vegetables are letting off enough water to where it's deglazing uh, the pan. But you're right, I did mention deglazing and typically I would put in the wine. Um, I'm actually trying to follow the recipe the way, she's, the way she has it listed. I know that's a big stretch for me. Okay, now we put a little flour in here because that's what the recipe said to do. We put a little bit of this flour in here and we're just trying to, you know, make a little bit of a roux type of thing here. Not a roux like, a, like you'd make for like a what do you call it, like a gumbo or anything like that, but we're just trying to get these vegetables to have a little, you know, we're just putting a little bit of thickening in there now. Okay, and now, I think we just dump everything else in here. <laughs> That's how I like to cook. <laughs> just dump it in here. Okay, just throw it in here. So th this is the, uh, the Nor Bouillon Cube. I really like these a lot. Great for adding flavor. This is going to give us some nice chickeny flavor. You know, even though we've got our chicken in there and we've got it seasoned nicely, seasoned. That reminds me of my cousin Eric. My cousin Eric. That's his name is seasoned. That's his other name. <laughs> and he loves to cook. Yes, he does. As a matter of fact, when we left our house and we had to clear out our pantry, I gave him all our well, like ninety percent of our seasonings. <laughs> okay. So we're going to open up this nice broth. Like I said, we're not sponsored by Fawn, but we are affiliates with them. And so we can put a, a nice link for a, um, a discount for you to get this. You'll love it. It's really great broth. Even if you want to just drink it in the morning, like before you get your day started, yummy. So we're going to dump this in here. This recipe calls for, I think, two cups of broth. Oh, uh, no, four cups of broth. Yeah, four cups of broth. And this is about that. We're going to put our chicken back in here. We're going to put these green beans in here. Frozen green beans. Don't underestimate the usefulness of frozen vegetables. <laughs> That's looking pretty good already, huh? I think we're supposed to put these in there. I forgot the order. Now now everything's, the, the, the wheels have come off <laughs> my memory of this recipe. So I'm just dumping it all in there now because I don't quite remember what comes next. But I can promise you this is going to be delicious. Now yesterday we went to, um, you know, whenever we come into a town, we're on the coast, uh, central coast of Oregon, and whenever we come into a town we like to, you know, find who the best donut shop is or the best whoever, best pizza, best fish and chips. Here's the wine. A little sip. Mm -hmm. rest of it goes in there okay and then this is the uh, the lemon herb from keep your daydream um, because it had rosemary and thyme in it and I didn't have any rosemary uh, I'm gonna put these in here because well you always put bay leaves and stuff like this and sage is gonna go in here so the seasonings are going in and I'm gonna need a little bit more flour in here I can kind of tell already a little bit more flour you know, the funny thing is, is um, I'm trying to figure out how I learned how to cook. My mother didn't really like to cook that much, I think. I think, you know, she was a functional cook, like, and she was a good cook, but she just, I don't think she really liked to do it. Me and my brother loved to cook. You know, my brother took like six years of culinary school, or maybe it wasn't six, maybe it was three. Three, three years of culinary school. and like a serious school. Yeah, yeah, serious. I mean, he had like a chef hat on and an outfit. The whole thing. You know, we both love to cook. My mom, yeah. She didn't really love it. So I don't know where our love for cooking came. So these are the white potatoes. These are just like fingerling. I'm gonna need some more liquid in here too. Fingerling type um, potatoes. This is gonna be yummy. And then our sweet potatoes. As you can tell, I like to use paper plates because you know, after you've done all your, um, you know, chopping of vegetables and cutting everything up, you know, you gotta have a place to put it all. So 
putting it, actually I think I'm just going to use this jar, fill it up with some water. We're going to get one more jar of water in here and I think we're going to be good. What's lovely about this is today is Sunday and not only is this going to be amazing for dinner tonight, um, I'm not going to have to cook tomorrow. But I started mentioning that bakery that we went to and we bought these lovely, um, I don't even know what this bread was called, but it was really good last night. We had our tuna sandwiches on it, mm -hmm. but this is going to be a nice bread to have with our um, lovely soup. I think, our stew, excuse me. I think this is going to be where we are. This is where we're going to be right now. I feel like I need a little more powder in here, a little more flour. Okay. You know, the potatoes are going to act as a thickener too, so we probably don't need probably any more flour. Those potatoes will definitely give us a thickening that we're looking for here. All right, so now we're going to put the lid on this, and then when we come back, you're going to see. I wish this was smell-o-vision and you'd be able to smell it, but it's not, so we'll have to tell you. Okay, so we're going to turn this off, hit cancel to turn it off, then we're going to hit pressure cook, and it's already set for 20 minutes. So when we come back, we're going to see how this, we're going to finish it off because there's a few more things we need to do with it. We'll finish it off and then we'll serve it up, see how it is. All right, stay tuned. Okay, folks, we are back. Now, one thing I will say about this is, um, I think I said I was going to let it cook for 20 minutes in the Instant Pot on pressure cooking. You probably don't need that long. <laughs> Maybe, because you know, you're already sort of cooking the chicken, not all the way through, but you know, this chicken cooked up in these small pieces like this doesn't take a lot of time to cook. And if you're using chicken um, uh, thighs like I'm using, you know, they're forgiving. But if you're using a chicken breast and you cook it for 20 minutes, that's probably gonna be too long. So let's take a look and see. Ooh, that looks beautiful. Mmm, smells good too. So one other thing that I um, did uh, when I look back at the instructions, it said to put the it said to put the green beans in last. I didn't do that. So you'll want to do that. Put your green beans in last. We're going to take out these um, bay leaves. Bay leaves. I'm going to take that out. If we see them, oh, here's the other one. Okay. And then the last thing that we're going to put in, you see all that nice flavor and all the seasoning up on top there? Beautiful. So we're just going to put this cream in and stir it around. It already has a good thickness to it from the potatoes and the little bit of um, uh, flour that I put in there. So I think we're all set with that. Good, good, good. And this is... Uh, this is not cream, this is half and half, I guess cream, half and half, whatever. That's what I'm using, half and half. So now it's got a nice little creamy texture to it. And let's see, now this is going to be super hot, so we're going to have to be really careful with our tasting. <laughs> we don't burn our tongue off. Mm. Very yummy, very yummy. This is our rainy day chicken stew. Um, I'll put the, I, you know, I'm just going to put a link to the recipe because actually now that I think about it, I didn't have to make this up myself. I got it from a recipe. I'll put the recipe, be recipe below as well as links to, you know, the broth and the, the promo code for the broth and all that other good stuff. So thanks for watching. Like. Yeah, like. If you like this video, if you like chicken stew, if you have a recipe to share, like this. yeah or more content like this yeah give us a thumbs up for liking um, subscribe share and leave us a comment if you got a great rainy day recipe that you want to share or you have a better idea about how I might do something great with this uh, chicken stew let us know till next time see you later bye